Hello everybody, it's uh, Craig Quinnell back here again, speaking with you from uh, my hotel room in Isolation Hub in Ottawa, getting ready to, to go to Iqaluit for my next, uh, my next contract and assignment. Uh, just wanted to touch base with you and know that it's been a crazy week, things have been going on that are a little scary and uh, I, I hope, you know, I hope everybody, you know, is okay. My prayers and thoughts go out to each and every one of you. And I love you and you know Jesus loves you. And uh, he won't let anything anything happen to you. And he won't give you any more that you can bear. But I just wanted to say hello. And I've got a couple of things I want to touch on that have been on my heart to share with you. But uh, first of all, first first off, I just want to, uh, I want to start, as usual, uh, with a little prayer. And I'll end off in another prayer for a uh, um, that's that's been on my heart as well, but I'm going to first start off in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It uh, if you are all familiar with it, I always keep with me a, a, a whole book here, so do a tang of of prayers and thoughts and things that you know are are on my heart. But I just want to read a, a prayer that's you know it's a simple prayer. It's one that we as Catholics do all the time. But it, um, it is a powerful prayer, and I want, want to share it with you. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle, them, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Such such a powerful prayer. Um, and I think as well in, in this time, you know, one of the most important things is is to is to bring bring your rosary with you wherever you go and pray the rosary, meditate on the mysteries. And uh, it's it's a it's a weapon. It's the best weapon that we have. It's won so many wars, it's defeated so many enemies. Um, it's uh, it's something that people have forgotten about, um, but uh, it's uh, it's an awesome tool to be used to help the world, especially in these troubled times. You know, coupled with wearing your your brown scapular, and I always wear the brown scapular. I'd never take it off. Well, obviously, the only time to take it off is when I have to use the shower or the bath. But it's such an important tool as well, and the promise that. Our Lady of Mount Carmel made to St. Simon's stock in regards to the benefits of wearing that, along with, you know, saying your rosary, the benefits with wearing the, the scapular and being uh, dedicated to it. And of course, you just can't throw a scapular on. You have to get the uh, priest to do the, uh, the um, um, I can't remember the exact word, but it's basically, it's uh, dedicating yourself to to the scapular, not it doesn't have to be a specific scapular. It could be another brown scapular, but you're dedicated and to to Our Lady of Mount Carmel and wearing the scapular and understand its implications. It's very important that uh, you understand those who die wearing the brown scapular. Um, Our Lady promised that um, their their time in purgatory will be short and she will be there for them, and that by the by the latest the Saturday following that person's death. Our Lady will escort them to heaven. So wonderful promises. But of course, you have to, there's some things you have to, you know, you have to be going to confession on a regular basis and receiving the sacraments, as well as praying the rosary. So it's such an awesome promise that Our Lady makes. On top of Divine Mercy Sunday, if you're, if you're familiar with that, the promises made, uh, made by, uh, by Jesus to, uh, to Faustina for uh, saying the rosary and going to communion and going to uh, Divine Mercy uh, Sunday uh, Mass celebrations, along with a couple of other dedications, and then your all of your your venial, uh, your mortal, all your sins are wiped clean as if you were in baptism. So that's another important thing. But uh, on top of doing the rosary, my friends, I think an important thing is uh, is to consecrate yourself and uh, to Our Lady. And one of the consecrations, is an awesome one that was given to Elizabeth Kinneman, uh, is Consecration of the Flame of the Heart of Mary. So I'm just going to read this one to you as well. O Immaculate Heart of Mary, overflowing with goodness, show us your love for us. May the flame of your heart, O Mary, descend upon all mankind and thus be converted 
through the flame of your heart. Amen. And it's also important, you know, at some point in time that you uh, you dedicate yourself to uh, consecrate yourself to Mary. And there's um, a few books. If you go to um, Queen of uh, Queen of Peace Media, you'll find um, a consecration to Our Lady in a book. Um, definitely recommend it for anybody who uh, who wants to uh, further their spiritual life. But I want to get into the meat and potatoes of what's been on my heart. Um, I've got to, uh, I've, I've got to share this with you. Um, in these troubled times, we just need to remember that you know uh, these times aren't aren't the end, but they're the wonderful beginning um, of uh, something better. You know, in ushering in an era of peace for us here in this world, uh, where where evil will be conquered. And where we'll have that era of peace that we'll be able to uh, be vindicated of all the crimes that are done against us because of our beliefs. But uh, Carol Wojtyla, um, whom the world now remembers as St. John Paul II, who's also being attacked because of a whole bunch of other things uh, um, in, in, the, in the world. But in, a, in an address given in 1976, and it's kind of funny, in 1976 I can remember, I was in Philadelphia as well. Um, it was the uh, 1976 Euchar Eucharistic Congress in Philadelphia. I actually went to Philadelphia with the Boy Scouts, believe it or not. Uh, and I was uh, doing Scope 76, not far from Philadelphia. And uh, I, uh, I actually went into Philadelphia and I touched the Liberty Bell. So it was the, it was the, uh, Decla it's the signing of the uh, bicentennial, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And that's what the Liberty Bell represents. So Cardinal Voitia spoke some words, um, which definitely are today are, are prophetic. Uh, he said these words exactly, I'll, I'll quote them verbatim here. We are now standing in the face of the greatest historical confrontation humanity has ever experienced. I do not think that the wide circle of the American society or the whole world, wide world cir circle of Christian, the Christian community Realize this fully. We are now facing the final confrontation between the church and the anti-church, between the gospel and the anti-gospel, between Christ and the antichrist. The confrontation lies within the plans of the divine providence. It is therefore in God's plan, and it must be a trial which the church must take up and face courageous, courageously. And we're seeing the trials that are going on. Some of the statements that are being made by, uh, by. Uh, Pope Francis, and don't get me wrong, I stand behind our Pope, and I stand behind the bar computer, 100% dedicated. Um, we are all human, and we do make mistakes, but uh, my uh, my faith and trust is still in uh, Pope Francis. So God bless him, and we'll, we continue to pray for our Pope. Um, the world is affecting everybody, including you know our religious uh, um, our religious uh, leaders. And we need to pray for them constantly. They are under such great pressure and scrutiny. Um, but uh, no need to be afraid. And St. John Paul II also said that in his statement. He also said, be not afraid. Open up. No, swing wide the gates of Christ. Open up to his saving power the confines of the state. Open up economic and political systems, the vast empires of culture, civilization, and development. Be not afraid, St. John Paul II said. And I, I believe it appears like 365 times in the Bible, the New Testament and the Old Testament, where it says, be not afraid. So don't be afraid, my friends. Um, as long as, you know, you have, uh, you know, if God is for us, who could be against? Another biblical verse. I don't quote where they are in the Bible, but these are all verses that I've uh, I've remembered and uh, I hold dear to my heart. But yes, um, you do not be afraid and, uh, the, you know, God will take care of us. He will, uh, if he, he brings us to it, to it, he'll lead us through it. So um, I just also wanted to... Um, let you know that a lot of people are, are afraid of what's going on, and don't be afraid. Um, there, I think the most most of the people that I spoke to have said, you know, what about our children? How are we going to prepare them? They're they're so far away. They've been so influenced by the world that uh, it's not a good thing for them. Uh, they've slipped away. Well, I've got another prayer that I want you guys to say. Um, you can say it with me, uh, and it's 
basically dedicating them to God and, and giving your children into his hands. And as long as you, you, you provide good leadership and uh, you provide a good example and know that you're human, that you can't say all the perfect words, just ask the Holy Spirit to speak for you. And it's, we're going to lead it off here in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, the Father of mankind, who has given unto me these my children, and committed them to my charge to bring them up for thee, and to prepare them for eternal life, help me with thy heavenly grace, that I may be able to fulfill this most sacred duty and stewardship. Teach me both what, I, what to give and what to withhold, when to reprove and when to forbear. Make me to be gentle yet firm, considerate and watchful, and deliver me equally from the weakness of indulgence and the excess of severity, and grant that both by word and example I may be careful to lead them in the ways of wisdom and true piety, so that my last, that at last I may with them be admitted to the unspeakable joys of our true home in heaven in the company of the blessed angels and saints. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope these words bring you comfort, and be not afraid. Um, even though we're in these troubled times, I mean, I'm listening to, to news stories left, right, and center about how even in the Toronto Catholic School Board, they're chastising people for quoting, believe it or not, the Catechism of, of the Catholic Church in a Catholic school board. Uh, at a meeting saying, don't say those words, it offends the minorities, and uh, those words have to be spoken. What if, uh, what if Jesus came to that meeting? As one of the, the local cardinals said to the board in a letter, what if Jesus came to that meeting and said those words? He said, what you, know, what you need to hear. Would you also tell him that he can't speak, that not to use those words, that they are insulting and, and hurting people? Jesus' words are not words to hurt. The words of the catechism are not words to hurt, but they're words of love and respect and dignity for the individual and praying for them so that they also may share in the rewards of eternal life in heaven with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'd like to, I'd like to um, finish this off by saying I love you all and I know that Jesus loves you. Uh, again, make sure that, you know, they say rattle the beads. If you're... I know a couple of people out there say um, if you're if if you're not praying the rosary, you're not on the team. Doctor uh, Taylor Marshall, I think his name is. He always says that if you're not rattling the beads, you're not on the team. But please pray the rosary, and uh, be not afraid, and uh, keep your eyes up and focused. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. My prayers go out to you. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, and take care. Have a great weekend.